Hey guys, it's Daniel or Dan J, and today I thought I'd do a different sort of video to what I usually do. So I decided to do a book review on, as the title suggests, The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. Uh, so usually I don't really read, but recently I've been reading a few books. So Ali Abdal recommended The Millionaire Fast Lane, so I read that. It's a pretty good book. It's talking about wealth creation and the differences between the ways people make their wealth so there was like sidewalkers slow walkers and then the fast lane and essentially just from doing research into that book i watched this one youtube video which was talking about the almanac of naval ravikant which is basically a book about an angel investor which is someone who is like in the tech world or silicon valley whatever and they invest in startups to help them grow uh, and they're just called angels i don't know why uh, and essentially he had like a tech company and he made his money that way and then became an investor and obviously made more money. So he wrote a book about wealth and happiness and living life. And yeah, that's what I'm going to go through today. So to start with, he talked about wealth. So one of the big points of the millionaire fast lane was how wealth is self-defined. And Naval also agreed with this point. So essentially... Wealth is all dependent on what you think wealth is. To some people, wealth is just having a healthy family and having the things that they want to do, living the way they want to live and just being happy with that. And yeah, he said that being able to live well within your means and having a good life around you and all the people healthy, that's wealth. But also in terms of money, he's talking about how renting out your time for money isn't really a good strategy to get rich. So essentially what most people do, office jobs, I don't know, being doctors, you spend some time to get paid and you get paid based on the time you give. And for some that's good, that's fun, it helps them to achieve their goals, achieve their dreams, but for others, maybe you don't want that lifestyle. So you just gotta think about the fact that you're renting out your time to another person or a big boss who is getting all the money and they're essentially using you to make themselves more money. And it also touched on the fact that we all have leverage in some way. So that leverage could be from the people we know, from the things we know, and the things we can do. A lot of people know people, some people don't. And essentially leverage is something that can help you get ahead. And like, if you're not lucky enough to know people, like all these, some of these people starting doing startups and they get investments straight away, you can use the leverage of the things you know. So a lot of people know things that can't really be taught like off a YouTube video or something, you have to go out there and live these things. And that sort of leverage is some of the most important leverage because you can use that to your advantage, build in that skill, make it better, and then get paid to do that. And then the final point he touched on was becoming the best at the thing you were good at. So you find a thing that you're good at every day, perpetually learn and become better at that thing until you're sort of at the best level you can possibly be in that thing. And that will bring you wealth. That will bring you joy, happiness when you're at that point of that one thing you can do better than anyone else. And another thing he said is if you enjoy doing something today, but it could bore you tomorrow, then move on. Like there's no point wasting your time in it now. If you think about the future and longevity of the things you're doing, if they're just gonna be around for like a year or something and you're not just testing it out, you're just sticking in there because, oh, I might as well stick it out. Just let, just let it go, just let it go. And then the next point he talked on was happiness. So essentially happiness is learned, as he said, a big point he, uh, he gave is children are just happy in their mundane lives. They just do basically the same thing every day and they're happy to do that. And one thing he really touched on was happiness is the absence of desire. Like the analogy with children, children want things, they have desires, but when they don't get them, they kind of just move on and just go back to their play world. And essentially when your life is without desire, that's when you'll be happy. So letting go of some of those des desires or achieving them are the only ways forward, I guess. And through that, we can create our own happiness. When things come our way, we can accept them, change because of them, or leave them. And those are basically the only three things we can do. When you accept things, you're kind of like, okay, this did happen and that's all right. Sometimes in life, these things happen. When you change, that could be like, right, I've made a mistake or something's happened, I can change the way that I either perceive the things that happen to me or the way that I react to them 
or essentially change yourself because of what's happened to you, I guess. And then leaving it could be bad, could be good. Leaving it's kind of like, okay, this happened and I'm not gonna think about it and I'm just gonna move on without even reflecting on it. And yeah, that can build up and become problematic in the future. So I guess that might not be the best one of the three. And another thing he touched on was comparatives of like, you see a person on the street and I don't know, they're not looking that great or something. That's what you think you're like, oh wow, they don't look that great. Just to, and it's kind of like, just to make yourself feel better. We're constantly judging people and there's not really much to it. But if we just let go of those thoughts, we understand that we're doing it. When you actually consciously realize that's what you're on, then you can start to change it subconsciously too. And one quote that stuck with me is, we all feel fixed and the world is changeable, but actually the world is fixed and only we are changeable. So we can't change the basic fundamentals of the world. We can't change the people around us. All we can do is change who we are or where we are, whatever's happening in our life. And the final point he made was save yourself. So one thing he brought up earlier in the book was that he wants to be able to work in such a way that in 999 out of a thousand possible replayings of his life, he's gonna be successful in some way. Whether he's rich or not, he just wants to have the success and be happy in life and just feel accomplished. So he's gonna work for that thing. He's gonna work at the point that he feels like he'll be successful 999 times out of a thousand. That's 99.9% .9 of the time. And I guess that's saving yourself because you have to realize it's on you and all you can do is your best and go out and give it your best so that you can have the best life that you could possibly imagine and feel satisfied at the end of it. And then a big thing he touched on is there is no later. There's no, oh, I could do this later or, oh, I'll start on like Monday, stuff like that. If you want to do it, if you're going to do it, it's now. Okay, there's no later, there's no like, oh, I'm gonna quit doing that bad thing for me tomorrow or something like that. And touching on that, he said, if you wanna change something about yourself, tell everyone you know. Tell everyone you know that you're the best in your university year or something. And then every time they see you, they're gonna be like, I thought you said you were this guy. And then when they say that, that's gonna either sit with you like, I can either be a bum here and take the L off uh, what I said, or I can actually work to be what I told everyone I was going to be. So there's a good bit of accountability in that. So that is it, that is me reviewing and showing you what I learned from this book. I would recommend going out and buying it. You can buy it on Kindle for like £1.50, read it on your phone whenever you're going places. You could probably get it on Audible for like two quid, whatever, get a free trial of that. I think the whole book's like £15, but anyway, it is worth the money, it's worth the time to read it. It's, I think, two and a half-ish hours it took me to read. So yeah, just go dive in that see what stands out for you, see if it changes your thoughts on some of the things in this world about wealth creation, about happiness, about being yourself. And yeah, let me know down in the comment section below if you did read it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you like these sort of book review learning types things. And if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this content as well. And I will talk to you in the next video.